one of the challenges is uh, repair as, as a concept. Um, because although it sounds good from the outside and there's many repair projects that I've been considering that repair is not only environmental, but it's also social, including more than humans and so forth. A very common assumption, let's say, even in environmental practices, is that we can fix an ecosystem or an ecology. And that's when it gets uh, messy because who decides when it's working, uh, what gets excluded when we fix something, because of course, intervening is always prioritizing something versus others. So the notion of repair has a very clear meaning, if you will, with uh, electronics, with uh, machines, with probably engineering projects. What it means to function is very clear. But when things are more complex and everything is interrelated, then it's when it gets uh, more complicated because, of course, when you intervene in one aspect of it, some others are going to be destroyed. And by this, I don't mean at all that we shouldn't try to, and we should aim to get rid of some forms of pollution, increase the biodiversity of uh, most ecosystems, stop uh, urbanization and so forth. My question is, which words do you use so that it, they can help us um, imagine other futures and not going back to a reality that might have been good for some ecosystems and some humans, but not for others, humans and non-humans? Sounds great. Thank you very much, Nerea. I, I, I love what you say that um, that, the, that that ecologists um, are the agents and not the objects of reparation. And but I, I wanted to to ask you to say a bit more. So, how are the ecologists the agents of reparation? Which I I, I very much agree with, and I want to hear more about that. Mm -hmm. So. One of the main critiques to technofixes is that we've been trying to, well, we as a very difficult way to establish, but uh, there's been attempts to technofixes and geoengineering, engineering projects in trying to repair ecosystems through machines, infrastructures, and so forth. It's been very clearly demonstrated that they don't work. And instead, in many contexts, if we think about uh, restoration, for instance, the idea is that ecosystems are either let themselves to regenerate themselves to protectionist or conservationist uh, approaches, but also that some elements of that ecosystem, either because they got extinguished or for many different uh, causes, one might use other ecosystems and other ecologies to repair an existing one. This sounds reasonable, if you will, because it's uh, like um, nature with nature and then there doesn't seem to be a problem. However, what is important, and, and, and that's why I've been thinking to the notion of uh, involvement, is that if we understand that ecosystems are entangled, even if we think that they're very, very uh, separated, uh, if we benefit one, we might extract, um, pollute, or kill the other. And that's when the notion of reparation becomes uh, tricky because it always means that you're gonna use one tool for something else. So the, the, the aim is very clear. What, in my view, is a problem is when we think about them as agents, but also as tools for restoration or reparation. Because then we are not taking those tools uh, into account in themselves.
when I started thinking about air pollution, I started thinking that by making it visible and starting unpacking its different mm. uh, components, how it worked in time and space, by getting an understanding of how it works, where in the city certain components might be more intense, we would do something about it. And again, the we is a very uh, difficult we, but different actors uh, in urban environments to begin with. And then, of course, well, to begin with, it's because I've been researching uh, cities, but this can be translated as well to any other territory. So I thought that making by making it visible and presenting information, that would lead into behavioral change, that that would lead into action. One of the experiments that I've been pursuing through a, a project an installation that I call um, a spatial infrastructure has been yellow dust. In trying to make data about air pollution in a very, very specific place felt through bodily experiences. And not only felt, but also felt in a public space with others, which is very different to the experience that we normally have uh, with our phones and checking the pollution forecast. With that, what I was trying to explore was if people react differently and not only what they do differently, but how they think about the issue differently by not focusing on the data, but on issues around air pollution, people got involved in a very different way. So the data as numbers, because this was um, a water vapor cloud that, depending on its density, uh, indicated that there was more or less particular matter suspended in the air, that people would get an understanding, but actually the, the numbers, this obsession with how much, wouldn't be as important as why is this there? Um, why are we speaking about particulate matter and not nitrogen dioxide? Why are we speaking about it here and not elsewhere? Um, does it depend on the weather? Does it depend on... So to start getting an understanding of the specificity of pollution, but most importantly, the cultural and political conditions that produce it, that sustain it, that make it public and uh, eventually try to reduce the quantity of emissions or even try to repair that ecosystem. You talk about um, that, well, in a, in kind of in our words, but that ecological reparation or taking care of the atmosphere or uh, addressing it is in another way requires that we don't consider the air as a resource. So how would you say you consider air or maybe another elements, but air in particular? So thinking about it as an ecology, um, first of all, it acknowledges that it's something very diverse um, and that it has million particles, gases that are in constant transformation, that are uh, that move, that uh, stick to each other and create new compounds that so that are organic gases, um, uh, mineral. So in itself, it is an ecosystem. And if we treat it as such, we can start being precise on what are the consequences on intervening in it. Something that for me was really eye-opening, if you will, is when I started reading that some remediation efforts in trying to reduce some pollutants increased the concentrations or the distribution in space of other pollutants. So then that's when it becomes again a, an ethical question, which one do we prioritize?
in my research on air, for example, it has been absolutely fundamental to understand the multiple ways in which the air and its pollution is sensed, experienced, known. So yes, we have scientific devices, modes of understanding and thinking and trying to improve the air and air pollution, but they're so, so limited. It was, and the air is a very, very clear example. Like we know just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of what the air is, but we're missing all these other embodied, um, shared ways in which other aspects of the air are known, experienced, and dealt with. 